Welcome back. Let's hope that things are sorted out real quickly in Southern Katana. Mm -hmm. But let's look at issues around health today. The federal government on Monday raised an alarm over an increasing number of Lassa fever cases since 2016 December and advised that increased attention should be focused on prevention and preparedness. The government confirmed the death of six persons out of 19 confirmed cases of Lassa fever in seven states. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has advised Nigerians to focus more on prevention of Lassa fever through environmental, food, and personal hygiene. The health agency says the current dry season encourages rodents and other animals to find solace in homes. Mm -hmm. Keeping food securely safe away from rats is important, while health workers are to have a high index of suspicion for Lassa fever. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Lassa fever is always around us. No, it's not around me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure no rodent is around me. Anyway, so we'll have some medical personnel in the, in the studio in Lagos and Abuja to help us look at this entire matter. Dr. Babatunde Ikbaye, Commissioner for Health, Ogun State. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. Dr. Oladakbo Ashiyambi, Association, Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria. Thank you. Good morning. And in our Abuja studio, Dr. Chikwe Hekeazu, National Coordinator, Executive Officer, NCDC. Thank you. So let me begin with you, Dr. Hekeazu. That um, advice, health advisory to Nigerians, mm -hmm. um, give us um, a picture of what led to that advisory in words. Okay, so um, it's the beginning of the dry season and um, every year we, we do have a certain number of Lassa fever cases. It's a big country, as we know, Lassa fever is a zoonosis, that means it's, it's generally transmitted from animals to humans. The animal reservoir in this case is rats. Um, so, you know, given the complexity of Nigeria, we, we are not yet in a position where we can say we can stop all transmission. So we continue to actively advocate for prevention, primary prevention, that is stopping the transmission from rats to people. And we've been thinking about how that can be done over the past few years, um, you know, to keep our food th safe from rats, to prevent rat excreta getting onto our food stuff in all sorts of ways. However, our key message this year is even when we fail to prevent that first case, getting from rats to human, we can prevent further transmission from one case to another. And how do we do that? You know, there are two ways of transmitting Lassa fever. First is from rats to humans. Then humans can also transmit from one to other, to the other. And actually, what has led to the big outbreaks that we have seen are uh, basically after that initial transmission, further transmission uh, chains developing out of that to other humans. And generally, the biggest two groups of people um, that are at risk here are firstly healthcare workers and secondly family members of the primarily uh, infected person. So the focus of our communication message in this year is to prevent forward, uh, onward transmission from the first case. So we've been very active in supporting states around the country, preparing them with uh, commodities and medicines that they use. But the key message is to educate healthcare workers around universal precautions, use of gloves. Uh, no one comes in with Lassa fever written on his forehead. So we need to prevent further transmission. That means that they have to suspect Lassa fever as soon as a case comes in, especially when that case has been tested for malaria. There's a new test available, a rapid diagnostic test. Once that test is negative, we must stop thinking and continue treating for malaria. You know, we must start thinking of what an alternative diagnosis is, and one of those is Lassa fever, and then start trying to test for Lassa fever. If we detect these cases early, Lassa is uh, preventable, so you can prevent transmission. And critically, it is curable. So unlike, uh, unlike Ebola, there's actually a treatment for Lassa, but the probability of success of this treatment is if you can identify that case early and get him onto treatment. So our key message this year is early detection, i.e. think about Lassa very early in your diagnostic uh, framework for physicians. And once you've ruled out the more common causes of fever, think about Lassa, take a sample, get it confirmed, and if it's Lassa, let's start treating early.
Okay, um, let me come back to Dr. Ikbae. Dr. Ikbae, you had two cases, confirmed cases, and the two of them have passed on. But then there was, I think it was a statement that was released about the primary contact persons being observed. What's the situation in Ogun State? Well, um, thank you. Um, let, me, let me start by saying, um, just like uh, Dr. Ikbae had said, um, I think what we need to do uh, is to communicate the message of prevention and its promotion to the people. Um, in Ogun State, we had only one confirmed case and one probable case. But that I ac actually mean that the confirmed case was the, one, the only one that we diagnosed before death. Um, the other case uh, had died um, and uh, was reported, and, but the documentation suggested uh, clinical signs and symptoms um, of, of Lassa. So, so uh, and epidemiologically is classified as a uh, you know, probable case, not confirmed. But what have we done as a state? What we did after the case was reported by the Federal Medical Center, uh, Belkuta, is to um, you know, go into the center, um, you know, got the community together, the health community, doctor, nurses, those who have managed, help identify contacts, primary, secondary contacts, um, like I said, health workers that have helped manage those cases, um, the family members that have supported uh, in managing those cases, um, and we were able to identify about 396 contacts, okay? We also educated uh, the members of the hospital community on how to increase their level of suspicion, uh, how to, you know, make diagnosis and do proper reporting. Uh, because um, it was a bit late before they reported to the state. And, you know, even if it was the medical, federal medical center, they don't, there are no federal Nigerians. Uh, they, they actually manage the people in the whole state. But, after doing that, we assisted um, the center to decontaminate all the <coughs> points where those cases were managed. The ETR unit was decontaminated by the state government. We decontaminated uh, the wards where the cases were managed. We also decontaminated uh, the ICU where the particular worker that died was managed. We um, decontaminated the mortuary where they were kept. And of course, we also assisted the management to set up an isolation unit because um, if you suspect a case, the best place to manage suspected cases are actually isolation facilities. And uh, so today in Ugo State now, we have an isolation facility in Federal Medical Center Abuja, set up with the support from the state government. We also have an isolation center at the University Teaching Hospital Shagamu, um, uh, where we could manage cases. We also, uh, after identifying the 396 cases, we provided them, each of them with a thermometer and the surveillance officer to monitor them. So, well, hold on, 396 yeah. under observation now. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let me, let me, then, okay, then, then, uh, let me okay. conclude. Because what we need to do is to do an active surveillance on them for 21 days, which is the longest incubation period of Lhasa. And they were discharged, they were all discharged about uh, 11 days ago, right? Um, the, 397, the 396, about, about four of them had FIFA episode. We took their blood samples, uh, but they tested negative. Uh, we also had uh, some 29, you know, contacts because another another case um, was reported in Oyo State that had relationship with uh, one of the cases in Ogun State, and uh, 29 of the contacts actually reside in Ogun State. And uh, we have also followed those ones up to yesterday. Uh, we discharged all of them yesterday. So um, we have gone uh, engaging the people, particularly in our rural communities, uh, through our medical officers of health and our surveillance officers. We have trained networkers, uh, just like Dr. Epezo has said, because what needs to happen is that... Because this training of health workers, we know Lassa Fever has been here for uh, a number of years, yep. and almost every year we have cases. In fact, 2012 was said to be the peak, yep. but I don't know how we'll describe what happened between uh, um, late 2015 and 2016, last year. Because out of uh, 175 suspected and confirmed cases, 101 people died. No, um, so w where I'm going is, in Ogun State, two confirmed cases and two deaths, and it's um, health workers. But where did they miss it? Okay, um, you know, there, there, there are things we need to know. First is that the epidemiology of Lhasa is cyclical. Okay, you know, though it's, it, it, it's endemic um, to West Africa, but the epidemiology is cyclical. It's usually come around, you know, this season, when plant season, when 
people go to uh, infiltrate by way of farming the natural habitat of the multi mammoth rat. Uh, so they relocate to 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 human abode, and then uh, they come in contact with human. Okay. So um, and because we have so many other conditions that are endemic care that look like Lassa malaria, it's like the you know, Lassa symptoms and signs are very close to malaria, particularly in the early stages. So, and because malaria is with us, everybody just assumes that if you come with fever, you have headache, you have this, it's malaria. Especially when you have not heard about cases of Lassa around that time before then. Because it looks like typhoid, because it looks like any other fever, because it looks like, okay? So, because people traditionally treat people for malaria, they just assume that every fever headache is a malaria first, mm -hmm. but, when they treat and they do, the patients don't get well, of course, they also go to typhoid. <laughs> okay, um, and that's why the purpose of education and, and or training and retraining, when you are around the seasonal um, uh, correlation with lesser transmission, is such that at that point in time, your index of sus suspicion must be high. And just like Dr. Ikazo has said, now that we have an epidemic in our hand, any case of malaria that is not responding to medication in the first three days of treatment, don't think resistant malaria, don't think typhoid, also think Lassa.